Hello, and welcome back to my second episode on how to be a better rust electrician. Um, so since we were last here, uh, I had to make a new base with server wipe, so uh, I went ahead and upgraded our knee core into a four, just because I wanted to make sure that we had all the electricity we need to do whatever we wanted. Uh, added some wind turbines, got rid of solar panels, and just used the solar panel for the auto lights, which I'm going to click off here in a little bit. Um, I had some comments on the last video explaining, uh, one person was asking why not just, you know, if I have 600, uh, electricity generation or whatever, how did the exact comment go? I think I can pull it up real quick. Um, Yeah, so this person said, my base has over 300 power all the time. I have like 200 to play with. Just split your charging sources to three batteries with a splitter, then combine them with root combiners. Then you have three to 400 power continuous. And you would be technically, or you, you would think that that is correct, but that is not true. Because let's say that you have those three batteries, right? And you're sitting in 400. Here, let's see something. Calculator. Uh, 300 power, let me divide that by 0.8. So you need 375 just to say even. So that means that 25 of your power, see, that's what's left over. Let me, um, let me clear that. The 25, I can just point it by 0.25. Uh, five. So you're only sending 20 electricity to your battery every ticker, however it decides when to send that power, right? So you're throwing away a lot of electricity that you don't need to. Um, instead, if you were to build a knee core, you, if you had 200 as your power, or 300, we'll just say 300 was your power requirement, um, and you had 400 power that you were sending in, uh, the 300 power would immediately get eaten and sent to the circuits, and then we can times 100 by 0.20, and so you'd be sending 80 power to your batteries every tick instead, right? So that, that's the benefit of a knee core because whenever you use a battery, and it's very easy to skip over this whenever you read these, especially because part of the tooltip's wrong. Like right here it says that, uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, can be wired in series. Yeah, it technically can be wired in series, but that's stupid. You should never wire these in series. But you'll see it says with a maximum efficiency, 80% efficiency, so that means that any power that you throw in this battery, you're throwing 20% of it away. So it, that's why knee cores, and even some people are asking about ore blockers, which we'll go into in a little bit later, but that's what makes a knee core so powerful because you're not getting that 20% loss. All my power right now is getting sent immediately to these things. And then after I've paid for all this electricity, then I do the 20% tax, which ends up making it to where I'm throwing less energy away because 20% of 400 is a lot more than 20% of 100, right? So that, that's why you'd use a knee core, not inline. That's why inline is sin. Batteries are very inefficient. Uh, secondly, we had some people say I could just do this with an ore blocker set up. Um, you're technically right in that assumption. You can definitely do it. And an ore blocker is good for whenever you're uh, in tier one, you, you can't make your way to tier two yet because I, I believe an ore switch is um, tier one. I don't know, but you know, you could use a new ore blocker, which has a blocker, two branches and a um, ore switch. And so you're basically, instead of having all this jazz right here, you're just taking this branch and branching out here and yada, 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 and the rest goes to the battery. Uh, this is cool. But apparently this was an old design that was built whenever batteries used to not charge and discharge at the same time. And so I'm not quite sure 100% of the specifics on why the knee core is uh, more efficient. But it just has to do with the knee core being built with the modern set of rules that rust electricity follows now. And it takes into account that these batteries can be charged and discharged at the same time. Uh, I've been rest assured by people much smarter than you and I combined that this is definitely the case. But anyway, now that we're done with all that stuff, we can kind of get into what the meat and potatoes of this video is, and that is power delivery or electrical spines. Um, 
in our last example, I pretty much just rebuilt what we had. Everything's just kind of moved around a little bit, right? But over here, we got our um, our power generation comes in, hits our knee core. Here's our batteries for you know charging whenever we need them. Uh, and then right here we have our lights. So this is you know where our light circuit comes through, and we have a branch here. And then over here we have another branch that feeds in to the splitter and feeds these two turrets. And then over here we have another branch. And um, if we just ignore everything else and look at these branches, this is uh, considered a F bus or a fixed bus. That means that, you know, as we're sending electricity through, if we were to kind of come over here and just follow the power, you'd see we, we hit this blocker, or excuse me, uh, this branch, and then we come over here, this is our main power line coming from our knee core. We, we take a little bit off of here, siphon a bit off, and then we come over here, and we're sending our main power line this way. This is basically called a fixed uh, power bus. And that's because all the values that we're taking off are fixed and can't be changed unless we go manually change them ourselves, right? And so that is just one of the three different power buses you have available to yourself as an, uh, a rush electrician. The second kind of power bus that you have is considered a dynamic power bus. So that means, you know, like we send in some input here, we're sending in 31 and it's going to be evenly divided when it gets to this output uh, because it's, it's dynamic. So right here, we're basically just taking 31, 31 minus one is 30 divided by three is 10. We bring 10 in here. 10 minus 1 is 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and dynamic uh, buses or D buses are really good for stuff like electrical furnace, good for turrets to a certain extent, like if your numbers are easily dividable by 3, then this is a fucking beautiful solution. If you're doing a, a number to, you know, that's divided by 2, sometimes it's better to use branches, uh, just because it makes stuff a little bit cleaner. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, th these are like the two main power buses that you've probably used without realizing. Uh, and even right here, here's an example of a fixed bus uh, interacting with a dynamic power bus, right? And so you're going to be using power buses a lot. But, you know, there's certain cases where like right here, this doesn't need to be on a fixed memory bus. Uh, we're not always smelting ore. I mean, right now I'm smelting ore, but you might reach a point in the expand or not the expansion, excuse me, in the wipe where I don't really need my furnaces anymore and I don't want to invest in putting more solar panels up or maybe I don't even have the real estate to put more windmills up. I, I can't, I have to build more things. So sometimes it's cheaper just to say, well, what if I could turn this circuit off and reclaim another 35 power? And so that's where a C bus comes in or a configure siphon. And so what these basically allow you to do is toggle the stat. It, think of it like a breaker, right? A lot of people call these branches breakers. These aren't breakers, these are fuses. Basically what I'm doing is I'm putting a fuse here and saying, hey, no matter what, I'm always wanting to allow 21 electricity through here, no matter what. If I got 21, you send 21. If I have less than 21, send whatever I can send over here. Whereas what we're going to be building here, which is called a uh, C siphon or a C bus, I like to just call them breaker boxes, but um, or breakers. But the idea here is that you can, you know, like I said, change the state of this. So we're going to do a little bit of rewiring here just to make stuff prettier. We're going to get rid of all of these. We're going to get rid of that too. We're going to get rid of this because I'm a uh, believer in centralized uh, electrical. I mean, decentralized has its benefits, but for me, I think that putting all your main breakers and very important um, electrical circuits in one area is the best because usually that area is your core, which is the strongest place in the whole base. So you really don't want none of that stuff messed with. So what we're going to do is, you know what to... We're gonna do something else. I'm, I'm gonna. So, um, you know, as we we're talking about, we're gonna be uh, changing this over to a uh, C bus. But not everything in your base needs to be on a C bus. Like for example, turrets. Uh, these are pretty essential circuits that always need to be on, and honestly, need to be the first thing you tap power from because without your fur or without your turrets, like during a raid. Your furnace doesn't matter as much as your turrets do, if you want to think of it like that, right? So uh, whenever you're building essential circuits, you want to put those on a fixed bus or an F bus. So right here, we are going to put up two uh, electrical branches on our uh, F bus. 
fix bus because one, we want to add our turrets, and secondly, I think lights are also considered a essential circuit. So here, let me branch this out. I believe this one was what sixty. Then we're gonna branch out. Just gonna hit it right there. This one was twenty one. Branch out, and we don't really care about making this ultra pretty. Okay, and so now we're going to be build our uh, C bus. And so, what we're going to need to build a C bus, it's actually very simple to build. Um, we're going to need uh, two branches, we're going to need a memory cell, we're going to need a blocker. We're gonna need a Zor switch, which this is tier two. So, you know, you're, you're gonna have to, this isn't something you're gonna be building on wipe day immediately. And then we're gonna need a button because we're just gonna be building one of these for now. So let me go ahead and get all my stuff that I need on my bar. And so the way you're first gonna start this off is we're gonna need a memory cell. Give, give yourself a little fat off of your F bus because you never know, this might turn into a two row right here. So we're gonna say memory cell. I'm gonna put my blocker immediately after. I'm gonna put a electrical branch above that. I'm gonna put a electrical branch right here to the right of my memory cell. And then I'm gonna put my uh, Zor switch right above my bottom right branch. And then I'm gonna take my button. I'm gonna put my button right here under the toggle. So the way you're going to wire this up is you're going to take your inverted output from your memory cell and put that into your blocker and then send your blocker power up to your top um, branch. Then what we're going to do is we want to take our output from our memory cell and we want to send that to our bottom right branch. After we're done with that, we want to take our power out and we want to send that to our Zor switch. And then we're going to take our branch out and we're going to branch out over here to our block pass through on our blocker. After that, we're going to take our power out from our top uh, electrical branch and we're going to send it down to the Zor switch. Excuse me. And this right, oh, and then also we're going to take our button and we're going to hook it up to the toggle. And what you have here is basically a configure siphon or a C bus or a breaker. And so um, the way this works is that we basically take our power and we bring it into this first memory cell. So here, let me actually. Um, send power to my electrical bus and for now i'm just going to send a crazy huge amount of electricity and then we'll come back later and we'll uh figure out what it exactly needs to be oh let me uh grab a counter and honestly while i'm at it let me build a second one of these real quick Okay, there we go. So uh, what we basically have here is we have two conf two, two con C bus, uh, uh, yeah, C bus is hooked up right here, right? Or well, technically this is the C bus, like all these put together, like this is the F bus, but this is on our electrical spine. And, and most time on your electrical spines, you're gonna be using fixed buses and configure siphons. But the way this works is basically on this top branch, we can say what our power demand is. So for example, let's say if this was a circuit that required 30 electricity. Well, you'll see that now we have 175 on our main line, so we're pulling off 30 electricity. But if I were to come down here and click this button, you'd see I've reclaimed that 30 electricity back. And so that's what makes these so powerful. So same here, I can set this to something a lot more dramatic. We'll set it to 100. You'll see that I could sit there and boom, turn this on, turn that off, right? And so that's the idea of... Uh, configure siphons or yeah is that you could turn breakers on and off and so these are your three different power buses you have fixed buses configure siphons or c buses and then over here dynamic buses right and so a lot of your circuits that you're going to be building are going to be interfacing with these three uh different buses and there's different times when you want to use each of them right so for example we said this was going to be our furnaces so i can now branch out over here, yoink, you can see my furnaces immediately turned on because they're good to go. And if I were just like, yeah, we don't need furnaces anymore, I can yoink, turn it off, you see it turns off. 
and come over here, wait for the button to turn back on or uh, turn back off, and boom, we're good to go. And so, yeah, this is power buses, man. Uh, knowing how to effectively use a power bus, or excuse me, how to effectively design your electrical spine and know which power bus needs to be used when is going to be the difference between a F tier electrician and even up to a B tier electrician. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you like the content. I'll be putting out uh, more videos, which, you know, will be, you know, more pieces of the puzzle like this as far as like how to build batteries, electrical spines. Uh, I want to get into circuit theory. So that's like how to actually design a circuit, the way you need to work your way from, you know, backwards to the front and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, anyway, like I said, thanks again for watching and take it easy, folks.